One focus, one nudge, one desire, one thing we want to be in the holy presence of the lover of our soul.
our first love, the lover of our souls. There, there are a lot of things that can happen, God, for you to put your hands down for you and keep worshiping. And there are a lot of ways we can live our lives in acknowledgement of the presence of the Lord. There's a story in the Bible about two women who are in the same room as Jesus, Mary and Martha. And there's two uh, different angles you can take with loving the Lord and worshiping. Um, you can be like Martha, who is so busy trying to prepare for Jesus that she missed Jesus. That she missed spending time with him. That she missed actually sitting at his feet learning and seeing what he had to say and pouring out her affection. Or you can be like Mary. And not saying that Martha was just a terrible one, because there are some times where you do need to prepare for the Lord. Yes. But there needs to be a marriage of Mary and Martha. When you're not so overwhelmed by what you can do for him that you miss him. You're not so overwhelmed with preparing the set list. You're not so overwhelmed with working the job for the glory of the Lord that you miss that, that seeking time with him where you can lay at his feet and just sup and commune with the Father. So we're seeking to be like Mary tonight. We were laying aside what we left at home. We're laying aside what we left at our jobs. We're laying aside what we left in those relationships, that stress, that frustration. And we come to sit and worship at the feet of Jesus tonight, the lover of our souls. The lover of our souls.
we acknowledge, we acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge not just your presence, but the power of your presence. That we can be here and come in one way. And because of your love and your grace and your mercy and your presence that we leave change. That everything that's attached to us changes. That our lives change, our families change, our homes change, our jobs change, that our perspective changes. Right here in your presence, our shame is removed, our guilt is removed, our hearts are moving in your presence. Your presence changes everything. If you know his presence is a life-changing thing, would you lift up words of worship and words of praise for his presence? For his presence. For his presence. For his presence. In his presence, there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. In his presence is liberty. In his presence is the spirit. In his presence there's healing. In his presence there's joy. In his presence there's salvation. We thank you for your presence. stand in your presence, completely grateful that you would allow us to be here. And we are very aware of your miracle power. We are very aware that nothing is too hard for you. 
which is right why right now we do not talk sheepishly to you. We do not talk scaredly to you. You encourage us to step into your presence and to bring all of our concerns. So we do so boldly, knowing and understanding that you will not turn your face on us, knowing that you do not treat us as our sins deserve, but your very word says, ask and ye shall receive. So right now we ask, oh God, would you look our way? We know that we want the lens. Everything can change. We know that we want word. Everything can change because with that same mouth when you spoke, earth came into existence. You told sun go there and moon go there and you breathe and man come alive. So we know that there is power in you. So we say in the name of Jesus, would you release that power over this house today? In the name of Jesus, would you release that power over every household today? In the name of Jesus, would you release that power over every single body in the room tonight with our hands lifted up with great expectation that your blessings and your favor and your healing can flow from heaven. We say, have your way. Give us a look. Give us a glance. Search your eyes and see in us that we are worshipers, that our mind worship in you. It's and in truth, when we come boldly before you, honored to be in your presence, because we know that you are the one true King, Lord, and your name is Jesus. Every generational pattern be broken right now in the world. He will grow up to be a man of God in the name of Jesus. She will grow up to be a woman of God in the name of Jesus. The marriage will not break. I know the divorce will be a part of their history, but this will be the first marriage that breaks through in the name of Jesus. I know addiction has been a part of it for a long time, but in the name of Jesus, addiction be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Whether it be a mental or spiritual condition, you know how to maneuver both. You have control over both. So we speak peace over the mind. We speak peace over the spirit. And we say, in the name of Jesus, do what you can do. And we praise you because we know that you do not run out. We know that you have more than enough. So your presence and your healing and your power can touch each and every person in the room and those watching a lot around the world. Would you do this right now for them in the name of Jesus? If you're in agreement with that, take the next two minutes and give you your best praise. Come on, lift up your hands, open up your eyes, and let me give you God, give it a shot.
take a second actually that I feel in my spirit that we're supposed to pray for the next gen. From the baby to the teenager. Just look it over there. I know where baby I remember. The devil was just playing earlier. He's here with his baby, his newborn. And my prayer would be that the presence of God would, would anoint that baby. Yeah. The same anointing that his daddy carries and that he can carry. And I see, see Corey and Aaron. Aaron up here. Pastor Ralph and Lisa's sons. And there's a great calling on their lives. And our prayer is that the same anointing that's on Mama Lisa and Pastor Ralph would flow through them. And if I'm being honest, I'm thinking of Dylan and Chloe. I'm, I'm thinking of every child in the room. I'm, I'm thinking of all the children's ministers that we're so grateful for and all the, all the misfit leaders. Very, very grateful, very grateful, very grateful. From the Ryan and Janices that have served this bus for a long time to, to the now Christian Baker who's overseeing Misfit. I'm, I'm just praying for an anointing. Chandler, how old are you? 24. You, you grew up with a pastor's home? How long have you been saying? Where did you buy that voice? Because I want to buy it. I want to buy this for 10 years. You were 14. You know, the Holy Spirit told me years ago that this would be a house that worshipers are raised up in. But to mean that they raise up means to me that there's discipleship. And it's not just they appear to sing. But, but that means that in the mouth of babes and as children, as, as nine-year-olds and as ten-year-olds, we, we start to develop and we start to teach them that anointing. So when they hit a 24, my goodness, God can use them in a mighty way. And you can hear it in the room, lift up your hand. Every parent in the room, every brother, every older brother, every older sister in the room, lift up your hand. Every, Every misfit leader, lift up your hand. Every children's leader, lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Danielle, I'm going to ask for you to pray. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Up. All you parents, all you brothers, all you sisters, all you children's pastors and, and youth pastors. And maybe, maybe Saints Churches and your church you just came. Man, you're a part of this too. We're praying for that anointing for your house, for your church in the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we just love you. We, we worship you in this moment. We lift up our voices in this moment and we bless you and we thank you and we glorify you. Hallelujah. We acknowledge that the anointing flows from you. We acknowledge that the power flows from you. We acknowledge that the grace and the mercy comes from you. We acknowledge that you are the source. So tonight, God, we stretch up our hands. We open up our hearts. We lift up our hands and we say, God, anoint us again. Anoint the children. Again, anoint the brothers again, anoint the sisters again, anoint the mothers again, anoint the fathers again. You said in your word that out of the mouth of babes you have ordained praise. So, Father, tonight we decree and declare that praise is coming forth. Hallelujah. Out of the mouth of every babe in the name of Jesus, every teenager, every young adult, every adult in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that this praise will erupt. Jesus tonight. We pray that this will be an explosive night, a doing power night, a night, Lord Jesus, where down on the inside they will receive the Holy Ghost. We pray in the name of Jesus that the fire of God will begin to burn like never before. We pray in the name of Jesus that there will be such a fresh hunger, that there will be such a fresh thirsting of the righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we call this next generation a revival generation. We pray in the mighty name Jesus, oh, 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 that they will release the sound of praise, the sound of worship, the sound of deliverance, the sound of exhortation, the sound of lifting you up in the schools, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we pray that this generation will bring prayer back to school, we pray in the name of Jesus, that instead of doing mischievous, sneaky things, oh God, they'll be praying, they'll be laying hands, there'll be the raising up of the sick, that the Teach us how to pray, that you teach us how to war, that you teach us how to intercede. 
you're under an attack spiritually and mentally, and you keep trying to figure out, are you going to get a breakthrough? And the real breakthrough would be that you not worry on the situation, but you worry on God, and that you lift up your hands and you start to worship. So I can worship or start to worship anyway. No, no, I need you to worship. I need you to all the worship or start to worship. So start to worship. And anybody else dealing with spiritual warfare, I'm going to challenge you right now. Lift up your hands. You can't find peace. It's okay. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. The Holy Spirit is reminding you no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's an attempt, but it won't get through. It's an attempt, but it won't get through. It's an attempt, but it won't get through. Look, worship, lift up your hands, worship, 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 worship.
Oh, 
yours. You can do whatever you want to. And I was reading about Moses, where he's speaking to God. And God tells him what he wants of him. And Moses says, why me? God finds him in the field, working. And he says, Moses, Moses, take off your sandals. Where you're standing is holy ground. And the Lord gives him instruction and he says, why me, why me, why me? I find it amazing that we can ever insert ourselves into a moment like that and think that it actually has something to do with us. God continues to go on. He answers all of Moses' questions. He says, just tell him I am sent you. I am who I am. Now I'll have this little elaborate introduction written down for my sermon. But we're going to scrap all that and we're going to get to the altar. says, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> the Holy Spirit literally told me to tell you, it's not you, it's me. So when you say, well, why me? You say, it's not you, it's me. No, 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 it's not you, it's me. I'm going to be a parent, even though I didn't have a good representation of a parent. It's not you, it's me. You're going to, you're going to teach me how to be a husband and how to be a spouse. No, you don't get it. It's not you, it's me. You're going to use me to pass through a church that I grew up in, even though I can feel insecure at times. No, 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 Chris, you don't get it. It's not you. ministry and is running scared, this moment is for you. For the one that is frustrated and is not exclaiming, why me? But you're exclaiming, why not me? The Holy Spirit said, I, I found Moses working in the field. You only like to talk about the field. You want to be a preacher. You want to be a worship leader so that you can say that you're in the field. But notice where Moses is. He's just in the field. He's not looking for opportunity. He's not looking for stage time. He's not looking for power. And when my own spirit is sent to that room, don't worry about it. Get to the field. If you get to the field, I know where to find you. You don't, you don't got to call me. I'll call you. I know exactly. Where you are now, so the one that's in the field, you're working, you've been serving in children's ministry and youth ministry and choir and you've been playing music and you've been singing and you've been hosting. The Holy Spirit saying, it's me that's going to fill you. I'm going to lead you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guide you. And although you are aware of all your insecurities and flaws, the Holy Spirit is saying, that's exactly how I like to work. Because they suggest, why me? It's to suggest that at some point I can come put together or be good enough. Moses is aware of everything that is attached to his name. Liar, cheater, murderer, scared, insecure. So when God says, Moses, Moses, he's aware of all these things. And there are people in the room 
God has a calling on your life. He has called you. He said, I've called you to be a worship leader. I've called you to be a business owner. I've called you to be an entrepreneur. I've called you to be a pastor. I've called you to be a servant. I've called you to be a doorkeeper. I've called you to open up your home. I've called you to open up your generosity. And you are saying, why me? And he's saying, because that's exactly what I like to work with. I like to work with the foolish ones. I, I like to work with the broken ones. If, if you were put together, there would be no need of me. God is saying, but, but I need all your brokenness. I need all your jacked upness. I need all your mess ups and all your flaws. Because if you would just allow me to get with you, you would realize it's not you. fighting this idea of wrestling. Come to this altar. You can find this idea of serving in ministry. Come to this altar. Come to this altar. Come to this altar. Some of my Some of my this Come to this altar. You're going to be in the choir. Step out of the choir and come to this altar. You're in the balcony. Forget about the balcony and forget about the time for one minute and come to this altar.
unsure where you stand with God. If you've never given your life to Jesus, or at one point you did, but you walked away, so now you're uncertain. We don't want to live, we don't want you to live in uncertainty. So here's what we're going to do. We want you to close your eyes and bow your heads. If you want to give your life to Jesus, I'm going to lead you through a very simple prayer. I'm going to count to three, and when I say three, if that's you, you just shoot up your hand. And then we'll repeat a simple prayer together. One, Jesus loves you and he dies specifically for you. Two, tomorrow's not promised to any man or any woman. So he encourages us to take full advantage of this day. It says today is the day of salvation. If that's you, lift up your hand now. Three, lift it up. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 I want you to repeat this with me. In fact, let's repeat it together. Jesus, Jesus you, are king. you are King. You are Lord. You are Lord. Forgive, me of my sins Forgive me of my sins and all my wrongdoing. Wrong Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I, love you. I give my life to you. Life to you. Thank, you for dying Thank you for dying and rising again. Rising again. In the precious, the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, shout amen. All of you that are consulted, lift up your hands and we just pray over you. If you want to insert yourself in this prayer because you want to live as living sacrifices, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. If you can physically, just stand with us. I often question or not whether I should ask someone to stand after they've been standing for a while, but I would hate to miss the moment. Because there's something beautiful about breaking what's comfortable so that we can stand for what we need. I love the idea of reverence, that we would stand in the presence of God. So would you stand? Father God, with every person represented in the room, from the front to the back, for every person at this altar, in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that they would offer themselves as living sacrifices. That they would not be scared. They would not be overwhelmed. They would not allow insecurity to get the best of them. God, that you would, you would rearrange how they see, how they listen, how they hear. I pray that you would break off any toxic mindsets. I pray that you would change the way that they talk, the way that they speak, the language that they use. I pray that your Holy Spirit would fill them oh Father God and when they are feeling overwhelmed or scared that they would turn to prayer and they would become prayer warriors and they would begin to fight in the spirit and they would begin to get on their knees and they would start to worship you and they would start to praise you and they would become hungry for your word not just a passage or two but they would have a deeper hunger to understand what it is that your Old and New Testament talks about so that we can understand who you are Jesus Father God, would you fill us with your Holy Spirit? We do not get the opportunity to be saved and not assigned. So Father God, for each and every person in the room that is saved, allow them to embrace their assignment, that they would no longer run from it, but they would embrace it. If you call them to sit, then they'll sit in the name of Jesus. If you call them to parent, then they will parent in the name of Jesus. If you call them to be a housewife or a house dad, that's exactly what they'll do. And whatever their hand finds to do, they'll do it with all their might. Call to ministry. Pray that they would start to see their life as ministry. Yeah. They would start to see their home as ministry. They would start to see their marriage as ministry. Yeah. Yeah. For the one that has a big, audacious God assignment in front of them but is scared to step into it. Yeah. Father God, let them recognize who you are. Yeah. I am that I am. I am the one that will never leave us nor forsake us, that I am. The one that works it all together for, for your completion, that I am, that I am, that I am. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Guide us and lead us. That we would be those that seek after you, fight after you, 
won't succumb to peer pressure, won't get scared or nervous when we hear the whispers of the enemy because we know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So we're not going to get overwhelmed. We understand that the same power that comes from the grave lives in us, which now translates to more than just a verse. But a lifestyle, which means if we need to see revival, we can start to speak it in the name of Jesus. I speak life over every person here. That they will lift for you and honor you with their lives, with their wills, and with their ways. In the precious and matchless name of Jesus. If you agree, can you shout amen? amen. We thank God for our brother Shane Memorial. Can I get you to grab a seat? Grab a seat, please. Please grab a seat, go. I know it's late. Just grab a seat, grab a seat. I want to give special instruction to anyone that responded. I can't.